energy production and usage. Uh, before I start, I've got a number of very uh, distinguished and special guests uh, that are here with me to make uh, this announcement, including my very dear friend, uh, the governor of uh, the great state of Oklahoma, Mary Fallon, uh, and a number of folks from our uh, team uh, that are here that's helped to put this uh, program together that I'll be announcing in a few minutes. Uh, Kathy Franz from the Department of Mines, Mental and Energy, Maureen Madsen, our Deputy Secretary of Natural Resources, and our Secretary of Natural Resources, Doug Dominich, uh, Andrew Lamar, who helped, uh, as usual, putting together all these events uh, from our policy uh, office, uh, Joe Domingo from the uh, Department of General Services, who did a lot of the great contracting work to get us to this uh, day, and then two of our distinguished legislators who have been a uh, huge part of uh, the legislation that's led to the announcement I'm going to make here today. Now, Senator Jeff McWaters uh, of Virginia Beach and Delegate Danny Marshall of, uh, of Danville. I've got some other representatives of industry, our contracting friends that I'll announce and introduce here uh, in just, uh, just a minute. Uh, this is an important day because today we're embarking on a new chapter in uh, domestic energy production and usage uh, in our Commonwealth. Uh, I'm delighted to be able to announce uh, today uh, that uh, I have signed contracts yesterday and uh, I'm issuing an executive order today that will begin converting the state vehicle fleet uh, from gasoline and diesel to natural gas and propane. Uh, and this is an exciting uh, time for us because we've got 15,500 vehicles in that, uh, in that state fleet. And uh, to begin this process now of having them go to alternative fuels uh, are good for the taxpayers, primarily. It's good for the environment, uh, and it's going to be good for creating new competitive markets in the private sector as we uh, expand the number of uh, refueling stations as well. These uh, vehicles that we currently own are, uh, are operating almost exclusively today on uh, diesel and on gasoline. And of course, in addition to increasing our reliance on foreign sources uh, of oil. They're also becoming more expensive and, as you know, release higher emissions into the environment. Uh, today, though, there are uh, an emerging class of new vehicles. Uh, you see some of them here, trucks uh, and uh, cars and vans and any number of others, larger vehicles even, that can uh, safely operate on alternative fuels like propane and natural gas. And although alternative vehicles uh, such as propane and natural gas, electric and others are available and operating today, uh, one of the challenges in expanding their usage has been the fact that the infrastructure, at least in Virginia, isn't readily available. Mary Fallon is way ahead of me in that in Oklahoma, as uh, she'll tell you in a minute. So without sufficient infrastructure to provide adequate refueling stations and options for alternative fuel, uh, vehicles, our ability to make a meaningful difference with a uh, broad conversion of our state vehicles to natural gas and propane is uh, limited and very difficult. Uh, the alternative fuel vehicles uh, can and should be used by the Commonwealth to reduce our dependence on foreign oil and uh, to increase our reliance on domestic sources of energy. I, I don't need to tell you what the uh, new hydrofracking processes and the development and discovery of the Marcellus Shale have done to make uh, natural gas uh, perhaps the choice now of uh, fuels in the future, not just for electricity production with many more natural gas electricity generation plants, but also as applied uh, to our, our, uh, our automobiles. And let me just give you a little bit of the idea about the availability and what this is going to do for cost savings in Virginia. The use of compressed natural gas can reduce our emissions 29% uh, and as much as 88% if we use renewable landfill gas. Now, that's a significant positive impact on the environment. The use of liquid propane gas, which is part of our announcement here today, can reduce our emissions by 20%, so a clear environmental impact. Now, the bottom line, though, for the taxpayers, I think is even more pronounced and significant. The current negotiated price for a gallon of gasoline here in Virginia for our state, uh, state contracts and our state vehicles is $3.18. And most of you individual taxpayers are saying, hey, that's a pretty good deal, I like that. But let me tell you what we've negotiated when it comes to liquid, liquid uh, propane and liquefied natural gas. The compressed natural gas uh, conversion number is 
and 18 cents per gallon. Let me, let me just say that again, gives you this. It's a dollar 18 per gallon is what compressed natural gas. That's the equivalent as far as what you'd get for uh, the equivalent amount of natural gas uh, to take you a mile in a, that car versus a, a gas powered car. Uh, for liquid propane gas, it's $1.61. So either way, you're talking about half or less. And that's really your ongoing uh, major cost in operating your vehicles is your, your fuel source. So that's why today Virginia is taking the lead in converting the state fleet to alternative fuels. And I'm delighted to say that we are the first state in the nation uh, to take this step uh, in converting our fleet uh, to, uh, ga to natural gas. Oklahoma is right behind us, and uh, <laughs> Governor Fallon deserves a lot of credit for a couple things that I'll mention. In 2011, I proposed legislation to the General Assembly that was championed by, uh, by Delegate Danny Marshall, and it passed unanimously, and it required a plan for moving the state's vehicles to alternative fuels. And I knew we wanted to do this anyway, I just wanted to make sure the legislature was behind me, and I was delighted that all 140 legislators said, yes, we want to do this. Uh, and it also required the state to identify the best ways to convert our fleet and to develop the infrastructure necessary to support that fleet. Uh, as I mentioned, it's not only good for the environment, but it's very good for the taxpayer. And critically important, it's going to, through this contract, build the infrastructure in key places in Virginia that will also make this, these new fuel sources uh, available to private sector passenger cars, so we'll increase the private sector demand for alternative fuel vehicles as well. The executive order also directed that we issue a PPEA solicitation uh, to allow the private sector to make proposals uh, for alternative fuel uh, vehicles. And so over the last uh, year now, we've been going through this PPEA process. We had 14 companies that responded to the PPEA, and we've chosen two of the leading uh, alternative fuel vehicles to partner with us in that effort, and as I mentioned, those agreements were signed uh, yesterday, so they are literally, uh, literally the ink is still dry. This new public-private uh, partnership will help move uh, state and local governments and university vehicles uh, away from vehicles fueled by gasoline and diesel, and will help to reduce our dependence on foreign oil. Now, specifically with infrastructure, it will create at least six new natural gas refueling stations and seven new propane refueling stations across the Commonwealth, and possibly many more, depending on how that demand grows over time. Virginia now has this great opportunity to lead the nation by making a substantial contribution to reduced energy independence for coal, uh, for oil, uh, and, uh, and diesel. Today, we're here to kick off these vital partnerships with uh, the two vendors that we've selected. Clean Energy, who will be our natural gas vendor, and Blossom Gas, who will be our propane vendor. Uh, in a minute, I'm going to sign a couple documents, one of which will be an executive directive that requires all agencies of the Commonwealth to provide an alternative fuel conversion replacement plan in the next 60 days, that is by December 1st. Any vehicle which cannot be immediately converted or replaced with an alternative fuel vehicle will be identified by, for the reason that it can't be converted. Some of these will be economical. In other words, it makes economic sense to convert vehicles that are only one or two or maybe three years old, but not ones that are six or seven years old that are going to be uh, liquidated or sold anyway and be replaced as a, with a new vehicle. And so those will be the factors that we'll consider. And then we'll annually review those vehicles to assess whether new technology is more, is more competitively priced and makes these conversions uh, more cost effective. So I'm delighted to be here to announce uh, this uh, nation-leading conversion effort uh, starting right here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. I want to have you here now from some of our, our friends that uh, are working with us and have won these bids uh, to uh, help take this great step forward for Virginia. I first want to introduce Mike Riley. Mike is the Vice President of the Eastern Region for Clean Energy. Since 1999, Mark has taken a leading role in the alternative fuel industry. First is the state manager uh, of uh, New Hampshire's alternative fuel vehicle program, and then as the founder of two federally recognized Clean Cities Coalition in New Hampshire and Arizona. Uh, Mark currently directs uh, Clean Energy's business development and sales activities and manages the company's fields, uh, sales and business development personnel in the U.S. 
and candidates. So I'm pleased to welcome uh, our friend from Clean Energy, uh, Mark Riley. Good morning, everyone. Uh, in uh, 2008, the co-founder of our company, Boone Pickens, issued a challenge to uh, business and governmental leaders to find a solution to reduce our reliance on foreign petroleum. And here today, I'm, I'm honored to be joined by two governors that have really taken on this challenge and acted upon it and uh, are truly leading the way towards America's energy independence. Through, this leadership, uh, through his leadership, Governor McDonnell has put Virginia on a path to, sec to a secure energy future. Clean Energy's agreement with the Commonwealth will make natural gas fuel accessible to local governments, transit agencies, private fleets, and the general public throughout the Commonwealth. In September, Clean Energy completed construction of our first compressed natural gas fueling station in Virginia, located here in Richmond. Soon, fleets will, including the City of Richmond, Virginia, Virginia Commonwealth University, and the Greater Richmond Transit Commission, will be using cleaner, less expensive American natural gas fuel for their vehicles. We are also in the process of completing our first liquefied natural gas fueling facility just a few miles uh, uh, north of here. To position Virginia for success, Clean Energy has created important alliances and connections with Virginia businesses, utilities, educational institutions, and other industry partners. Specifically, I'd like to thank Corals Petroleum and Pilot Flying J, who are, who are our real estate partners here in Virginia and also throughout the region and throughout the country to co-locate natural gas fueling stations at their major facilities. I'd also like to recognize the Virginia Clean Energy Research and Development Center and their executive director, Ed Rogers, for their support and effort in developing our offering to the, to, to the Commonwealth. Governor McDonald, thank you for your confidence in clean energy as a partner, and we look forward. Let me introduce to you now uh, Steve McCoy of Blossom Gas. As, as I mentioned, we picked two vendors out of the multiple ones, and we got not just gas, uh, propane and natural gas, but we got electricity, we got a number of alternatives, but we chose these two, in part because of the infrastructure mix, and in part because of the type of vehicles and what's available. Some are available to run on propane, some on natural gas, and that's why you see we have two vendors here. Uh, Steve has worked over the last four years uh, uh, to focus on promoting propane auto gas as a clean, economical, and uh, domestic alternative fuel for vehicles, and we're delighted that uh, they were able to win part of this contract. Steve? On behalf of the more than 1,000 Autogas, Alliance Autogas, and partner employees, I want to thank you for this groundbreaking opportunity. Your vision for our Commonwealth of energy independence, job creation, environmental stewardship, and operational cost savings is truly extraordinary. Alliance Auto Gas currently has operational one dozen private and public refueling stations in the state and is ready to construct an additional 10 over the next 12 months, so as to create a, a truly integral refueling network. Lastly, and, and if I may so, say so on a personal note, being a 52-year uh, resident of the state of Virginia and a 30-year propane industry veteran, I am truly revved up about this opportunity <laughs> and our team is excited about implementing your vision. Thanks. Thanks. Well, listen, I am incredibly honored that we have my friend, uh, the governor of Oklahoma, Mary Fallon, here. She is a terrific uh, new governor being elected in 20. Uh, Ten. She was formerly uh, the lieutenant governor, formerly a member of Congress, and has immense wealth of experience in the public and private sector, which is making her a tremendous governor of, of Oklahoma. I had the chance to be uh, the head of the Southern States Energy Board for a year, but after stepping down, I couldn't have thought of a better person to lead the 18 Southern States in their energy policies than, than Governor Fallon. So uh, we asked her to do that, and she's doing just a marvelous uh, job. Uh, in that because uh, Oklahoma is a tremendous uh, energy rich state with so many God given natural resources. Uh, she sees the, the vision of having a comprehensive uh, all of the above uh, strategy for energy 
uh, and has taken a, a, a tremendous leadership role in uh, el helping to advocate for alternative energy uh, fuels using American natural resources. And over this last year, with, she's gotten governors from around the country together to see her vision of alternative fuel uh, vehicles, has been to Detroit, talked to them about uh, providing uh, lower cost uh, purchases uh, for alternative fuel vehicles for the states to uh, to use. And uh, I'm going to sign the memorandum that uh, Governor Fallon has put together that uh, is a coalition of 20 states and growing uh, for, uh, for this uh, effort. So she really is one of the top energy leaders in America today, and I'm just delighted that she happened to be in the neighborhood. That is Washington, D.C. That's in the neighborhood by Oklahoma standards, so I guess. And I'm delighted that she would come down here and be with us today to help explain what is happening nationally in this alternative energy movement, why it makes good economic sense for the taxpayer, and why it makes uh, good domestic sense for our energy consumers. So please welcome the great governor of Oklahoma, Mary Fallon. Governor, it's a great, great pleasure to be in the Commonwealth of Virginia. We're excited to be able to spend some time here prior to your energy conference, and congratulations on a wonderful energy conference coming up. I had the opportunity to look at your agenda, your speakers, your topics, and you put together a tremendous opportunity for your citizens here in Virginia, and I know people here are coming from out of state to participate in that, and we are very excited to be a part of your announcement today for a wonderful initiative that he's been working on for a long time. We started talking last year about energy and CNG and propane and alternative forms of energy and Governor McDonald was telling me about all of his different plans that he had, Governor. So we appreciate not only your vision and leadership for your citizens here in the Commonwealth of Virginia, but we also appreciate Governor McDonald's leadership in our nation. As you probably know, he is the chair of the Republican Governors Association. See him a little bit, even down in Oklahoma on national TV. <laughs> Maybe a little bit more than a little bit. He does a great job. But, of course, as he mentioned, he and I had the opportunity to serve on the Southern States Energy Board. He asked me to, to fill his big shoes after he finished with that. And Governor, I'm happy to report we just had the Southern Energy Board meeting in Oklahoma City just last week. And we had a great turnout, a lot of wonderful people. So. He's not only been a great leader for Virginia, but certainly a wonderful leader for our nation and someone that is highly respected and especially respected among his colleagues in the Governor's Association. So I appreciate the opportunity to be here and be a part of this conference and this kickoff. And I want to thank the Alliance Auto Gas and Clean Energy folks that have joined us here today. Thank you so much for your leadership in the private sector and in the industry itself and our delegates that are represented here, elected officials. and all your other secretaries of many different cabinets that are represented here that I see and private sector folks that have joined us for helping us provide a vision forward for a sorely needed diverse energy plan for not only Virginia but for our nation and one that we can translate into a plan of action for our state fleet vehicle systems. Governor McDonald, I, I know that you're initiative has been in the works for quite some time because he's been telling me about it and today he's going to sign a, a memorandum of understanding with other states in our nation certainly signing his executive order uh, leading his vision on into state government and, and other forms of government here in the state of Virginia but through his leadership through leadership on behalf of some of our other governors now we have 22 states it's actually grown since you've been speaking <laughs> See how great his leadership is? <laughs> we actually have 22 state purchasing offices that have signed on to a memorandum of understanding saying that they'll commit to looking at use, utilizing compressed natural gas vehicles for our state cars or state fleet systems. And we officially have 15 governors, both Democrat and Republican governors, that have found a way to come together on an issue. Many times when our colleagues in Washington, D.C. can't find a way to come together. But 15 different governors have signed on to this memorandum saying that we have made a commitment to convert our state fleet systems when it makes sense financially, when we get the right product in the marketplace, to utilize natural gas vehicles, which as the governor so eloquently outlined, is, is important 
for many reasons. One is it will help save taxpayers money, which we're all for that. As we look at the price of natural gas, the price of natural gas gallon, as it relates to a gasoline equivalent gallon, we know that it is a lot less expensive, almost half the cost, as he just outlined. In the state of Oklahoma, we estimate it's going to be about a dollar a dollar twenty-three in our state per gallon of gasoline equivalent. <laughs> well, wait a minute, I haven't finished yet. <laughs> and, and if you look at, uh, if we buy it from our state, I notice your price is a little bit less when you have a large contract with your state. But as we do that, we estimate it's going to be sixty-eight cents savings to the state of Oklahoma. And if you look at that, the price of a gallon of gasoline at the marketplace, which is averaging in Oklahoma anywhere from $3.79 on up, and I know in other places of the country, up over $4 a gallon many times, been up on the week. You know, that's a large savings for our taxpayers. So not only is it good for our state budgets, and it's good for our taxpayers, but it's also good because it is a clean form of energy, which helps us to be better stewards of our land and our water and our air. It is also an American-made source of energy, which we think is very, very important. And when we utilize American-made energy, we're creating jobs back in our states, which all of us want to create jobs and grow our economy. And when we create jobs, guess what else happens? And I know the governor knows this. We create revenue back into our local states and our, and our budgets so that we can use money to either give back tax breaks to our citizens or we can fund education or roads and transportation, uh, public safety, whatever the health care, whatever the issue might be are important priorities of our state. So this makes good sense. It's a win-win for not only our, our states, your commonwealth, but it's, it's a win for our nation because we reduce our dependency on foreign oil which is important not only for national security purposes for our nation, but it's important for economic security of our nation when we're creating those jobs on American soil, buying American-made energy, which is abundant. Natural gas is abundant. We have a large supply, not only certainly in Oklahoma, but I know you have uh, great natural gas resources and other sources of energy as we do in our state and here in, here in the Commonwealth of, of Virginia. So this is an exciting initiative. It's one where we pull together both political parties, once again doing something when Washington, D.C. has a hard time getting uh, things done. So today, uh, we have uh, a memorandum of understanding that uh, Governor Dahl and I are going to sign, and he will be adding to be the 15th governor. He's been, of course, a visionary even prior to this day because he's already put forth plans here in Virginia. But on Thursday of this week, I have the Oklahoma Governor's Conference on Energy. And there's actually <laughs> Governor Hickenlooper in Colorado will have his Governor's Conference on Energy. So many of us governors are trying to do what we can to reduce our dependence on foreign oil, support all the above energy type policies in our states, but to have a vision and a plan for individual states. And that's what today is about is working together, and it is fun, Governor, that we can work together. You are the East Coast leader in natural gas. I'm the heartland leader <laughs> in, in my area of the United States, and, and in Oklahoma in particular. So thank you so much for having us here in the Commonwealth. We're excited to be here. Congratulations on a great energy conference. I've seen all the booths and the speakers coming up. I know it's gonna be a tremendous opportunity for the industry and certainly for your citizens. Thank you.